Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I will be talking about another Marxian concept, the general intellect. So as you might have noticed, I'm kind of rediscovering my love of Marx and going back to my early readings of the Marx. And the concept of the general intellect is really significant in contemporary Marxism, but also in understanding the contemporary capitalism, neoliberalism, and its different, you know, permutations. And the concept is introduced by Marx in what was later published as Grundrisse, right? Grundrisse was published, I think, posthumously in 1939 and it was eventually translated into English in 1970s. And this book, of course, precedes Capital Volume 1, and this is the book in which Mark, Marx lays down, you know, an explanation of his method. And in those notes is a set of notes which is called The Fragment on Machines. And it is within that fragment that Marx talks about the role of machines in the productive process, but also the role of consciousness as well as of the general intellect. So that's what I will roughly be talking about. How does Marx think about it, theorize it, and what is its significance in our understanding of it today. So this fragment on machines from Gundry's uh, reads like this and I'm going to add a previously recording reading of it on screen. We can all go over it and then I'll come back and talk to you about it. Nature builds no machines, no locomotives, railways, electric telegraphs, self-acting mules, etc. These are products of human industry, natural materials transformed into organs of the human will over nature or of human participation in nature. They are organs of the human brain created by human hand, the power of knowledge objectified. The development of fixed capital indicates to what degree general social knowledge has become a direct force of production, and to what degree, hence, the conditions of the process of social life itself have come under the control of the general intellect and have been transformed in accordance. So quite a few things are instructive in this passage. First of all, Marx is trying to understand what is the role of machines within the productive processes, right? But what he's teaching us that machines are human brain and intellect made object, right? So what happens when we develop these machines, the machines of his time, it took the general intellect, the general knowledge of a given society combined with human labor to transform natural materials into machines that could actually do some work, right? The cotton gins, right? The railways, the telegraphs, none of that is made by nature. It involves two things, human knowledge, right? And human labor to create these machines. And that human knowledge is what he calls the general intellect, that in any given capitalistic society, there is a general knowledge of things, how to build them, how to create them, how to operate them, and that it's that knowledge combined with labor produces the machines. Now, based on these assumptions, then Marx, you know, tries to foresee what will happen in capital. Now, remember, capital for him works with one basic contract, that there are people who have capital and there are people who must sell their labor to the capitalist to make a living, right? 
So capital in Marx's view then absolutely needs the productive forces. Labor is a part of it, right? And it needs the worker willing to sell his or her labor to produce value. We'll discuss the question of value at some other time. So if machines, which are general intellect made object, made into a thing that can work for a worker, if machines take over the work of the worker, then in an ideal situation, the worker does not need to sell his or her labor to sustain life. And that's why Marx says in different parts of the fragment that this would eventually undo capital, right? Undo in a sense that its basic logic would fail when there are no people forced to sell their labor to make a living and if their job can be done by the general intellect made into an object called a machine, then that would be sort of the death of capital. Now, Marx is being prophetic here. And the prophetic part of his understanding here is that eventually capitalism would become a kind of capitalism in which the general intellect, the general knowledge of a given capitalistic society would start driving the economy and would become part of the constant capital, part of the thing that doesn't need labor to produce value. He was right there. He was very prophetic. But you know, a lot of people make fun of it because they say, oh, well, but the undoing of capital didn't happen. Socialism didn't arrive, right? The general intellect didn't release labor from their obligation to sell their labor, right? And uh, a lot of people, you know, Paulo Verno also wrote about it. Quite a lot of leftists have written about it. And of course, the conservatives they have a heyday with it. But one thing that they don't really understand, a lot of people read Marx and his pronouncements in evolutionary terms. People think that since it is dialectical materialism, things are going to change as capitalism rises. Now, if you've read your Freire, you already know things don't change by themselves, right? That's fatalism if we sit and say capitalism will sort it out. Things change through revolutionary action. Things change when people force things to change. So if you look at post-1980s or even before that, when machines come in, right, they are not used to relieve labor of their work. They are used to replace labor, right? That's why the early labor movement was opposed to the machines, right? Because the machines were taking away their jobs. Right? So machines get incorporated within the project of capitalism itself. The capitalists start using them. So general intellect made object in machines doesn't necessarily free the workers for two reasons. One, because the capitalists mobilize the machines to produce commodities, right? But at the same time, they also own the mode of production. And the labor is kept more and more precarious, right? None of this is, ever, is natural, right? It's part of a given politics. So overall, then, general intellect is the collective knowledge of a given capitalistic society made objective in creation of the machines that do the work that labor used to do. And hence, maybe increase productivity, increase the production of surplus value. The thing for us to keep in mind, and Franco Berarde does a great job of theorizing or re-theorizing the question of the general intellect, is where capitalism is now, right? Majority of capitalistic activity now is made possible by the general intellect, which has now become part of the world in which we live, the world in which we breathe, right? It produces value simply by being there. We need it to exist, the internet, this phone, right? So the role of the general intellect now 
is reached a point where human beings are dependent upon their connectivity to the general intellect through the cybernetics and others to make a living and to produce value, right? And that is what Franco Berardi calls semio-capital, right? Semio-capital is when we sit in front of computers, in front of machines, work through cybernetics to produce value and also to make a living. Right? So this is generally the role of general intellect in Marxism, but also in the capitalism of today. Uh, the concept doesn't really figure very prominently in Capital Volume 1, but of course in Guntry's, it is an interesting passage to read and interesting passages to read. Also keep in mind uh, the role of the general intellect in understanding the cyber economy, in under understanding uh, the cyber capital or the neoliberal capital. All of those things are important to keep in mind. Now I had some other thoughts too, but I'm going to leave it here. And eventually, I think to really clearly understand it, you will have to understand the difference between what Marx called the constant capital and variable capital, right? The constant capital is the things that you need, machinery, you know, raw materials and all, and then variable capital is human capital. And in that sense, then, the general intellect, by becoming the constant capital, part of the value producing system itself, not variable capital, not associated with labor, is also something that is important in understanding the role of the general intellect. But these are just some of my thoughts. Uh, to clearly understand the concept, of course, go to Gundry's and read the fragment on machines side by side, carefully, passage by passage. Then go and read, read Capital Volume 1. But uh, for a contemporary explanation of the role of the general intellect in global economy and in our creation of our human subjectivities, Franco Berardi's The Soul at Work is probably the most important book. And uh, there are a couple of other books too, which I'll post in the links uh, in the description below, which are important to read. And uh, that's all I got. Let me know what you think. And uh, thank you so much for joining me here in my this kind of return to Marx and trying to re-understand him and maybe incorporate it in my scholarly work. That's all. Thank you so much. And as always, take care of yourselves, take care of others around you, and I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.